So today, we're going to be seeing what would have happened if the feral predator from Prey crash-landed on Isla Nublar. Could he survive there? Well, let's get started, and let's find out. But before we get started, we need to lay down the groundwork, some rules. For this scenario, scenario every dino that has ever been on Isla Nublar may or may not show up uh, in this video. Uh, you know, and I mean all of them. Uh, the big one in her pack of three might be in it. Blue and her sisters, the Indominus, Rexy, the Scorpius Rex, Allosaurus, uh, Carnotaurus, Baryonyx, all the herbivores we've seen. And we can throw the Indoraptor in there for fun. Basically, everyone you see in this uh, picture here may or may not be in this video. Um, and just like in Prey, the feral predator will start with smaller prey and then get bigger from there. And now let's talk about the feral predator. This guy was able to wrestle with a grizzly bear, kill it, and then lift it high above its head. An animal that could weigh a thousand or more pounds. Uh, he easily walked off being mauled by that grizzly bear, ignored being bitten on the leg by a wolf, and he endured being pierced by spears, bows, and axes, up and down throughout his body, even being impaled through the chest by a spear, and just kept fighting through it, just pulled it out, and just kept fighting uh, like a champion. Uh, he was also able to kill a rattlesnake before it could strike, block and dodge arrows and bullets, and easily catch up to people running away from him after they had already had a head start. He also carries a lot of gadgets and advanced weaponry on him, including his biomask that allowed him to see in infrared and ultraviolet. His wrist gauntlet comes with a retractable double wrist blade, a neck gun that constricts until it crushes whatever it's holding, a retractable shield that seems to be very or er, highly indestructible, even sliced the dude in half, uh, and a self-destruct bomb. Uh, he also has some sort of metal arrow gun on his wrist with a laser pointer instead of the classic, you know, plasma cannon. And a combi stick that can be split into two. Uh, he has these little discs that he can throw that spin really fast and project an omnidirectional array of small metal arrow things. Um, and his most valuable gear seems to be his cloaking tech. So... That is the feral predator. But, how does he square up with the dinosaurs of Isla Nublar? Well, let's get started. Chapter 1. Observing. Well, upon landing on Isla Nublar, which he'll land on a beach, by the way, that's important for later, uh, he'll notice all the big dinosaurs, and will just observe for a day or so, you know, he's got to be able to take care, you know, take them down if he needs to, right, he needs to know what they can do, what they're capable of, he does this to learn as much as he can about them, while watching the Indominus eat a Gallimimus, uh, she stops and looks in his general location, but doesn't see him due to the cloaking, uh, due, due to his cloaking tech, and just continues on eating. Uh, he also learns this creature can camouflage as he saw her take down the Gallimimus. Later, while watching Blue and her sisters take down a Parasolophus, he feels a presence behind him in a tree, which he's in a tree observing him. Uh, and now we're entering Chapter 2, The Scorpius Rex. As he turns, uh, he sees the Scorpius Rex. The Scorpius realizes something is in its tree that doesn't belong and gets ready to attack as it towers over the cloaked intruder. The Predator draws his wrist blade. The Predator hasn't seen this creature and doesn't know of its weapons and capabil capabilities. Uh, the Scorpius Rex will pounce, the Predator will dodge, and both will fall out of the tree, but they're basically unharmed. And they will start, you know, fighting or whatever. Uh, throughout the fight, they both injure each other. Uh, a good old bite on the shoulder. 
uh, from the Scorpius to the Predator. Uh, the Predator is also struck by one of his poisonous quills, but is able to then stab this creature up through the neck, through the skull with his blade. The Predator feels the poison, but uses his medical supplies that basically instantly heals all wounds and is fine. And I'm just assuming it would take care of the poison, but I don't know. I'm going to say it does for the sake of the video. <laughs> um, while he is doing that, he notices Blue and her sisters coming over to investigate the commotion, and he cloaks himself. Seeing that he's outnumbered and realizing they are intelligent pack hunters, he's going to back off some ways, and the pack will feast on the Scorpius. He'll also keep the quill as a reward, as that's what predators do. They take rewards rewards from their prey after they killed it. Uh, after a few days, he's killed several dinosaurs. He's killed a Parasolophus uh, and a an Allosaurus with his arrow gun thing, a Baryonyx with his bare hands after wrestling around with it, kind of like he did with the grizzly bear, and a Carnotaurus after crushing its skull with the neck gun. That's a gruesome way to go. Uh, he's taken prizes from each of his kills and took them back to his ship. On his way back, though, after killing the Carnotaurus, he feels as if he's being watched and will cloak and then in an instant will slash out at a nearby bush. Shink! And a head of a, of a Dilophosaurus will fall out. He'll grab it. <laughs> FYI, that's not what is stalking him. As he gets closer to his ship, uh, he notices a pack of raptors walking around it, investigating it, and cloaks to get closer. He realizes this is not the same pack he saw a few days ago, as they're bigger, and there's only three of them. Entering Chapter 3, the big one. Uh, he's able to sneak up on one of them. Shink! Head flops... Uh, to the ground, and the other two are on guard. He then blasts the other male with uh, a metal arrow, and he falls to the ground crying, kind of whimpering out in pain. Angered, the big one pounces on top of him and knocks him over. She starts biting and clawing, including the big curved raptor claw, which she impaled through his chest and thinks it's over. As she's walking away, the predator gets up, puts her in a headlock, slams her on on top of her head, uh, and then just, like, rips her jaw off, you know? Kind of like what uh, Kong, 2005 Kong did with the less uh, V-Rex, just rips it, breaks. Got it. And he takes her big curved claw as a reward and tends to his wounds. He then looks up. And with his infrared vision, he sees something running off into the trees and bushes. As if something was there, watching him do this. He then goes over to where it was. He analyzes the tracks and sees he hasn't seen this dino before. It's similar to other carnivores, but this one is new to him. No matter, it's just another prize for him. He does know this thing is relatively large carnivorous and smart as it's just been watching and stalking him the past couple of days like a true hunter would just then he hears something in a nearby bush and cloaks then a band of compies come running and hopping out not seeing them as a worthy challenger he just heads back to his ship while cloaked about an hour later he feels something uh, land on the top of his ship uh, as he's inside it he goes out and sees it's a pteranodon. It sees him and just flies at him in which he just slices and dices and takes its wings as a prize. He then sees a flock of pteranodons fly over him and then he feels it, the ground, as if something very large, very heavy, is headed in his general direction. And then out of the trees, a massive head just appears about 18 foot high as Rexy walks out onto the beach. Chapter 4 The Rematch Rexy versus the Indominus. 
Realizing the danger this anim animal uh, uh, possesses, he retreats into his ship and waits for her to pass. She would have done just that if the ship didn't have a blinking red light on it. Uh, she walks up to the ship and kind of just starts knocking her head up against it and moving it slightly while making some like curious roars. I imagine this would be similar to when Rexy first escaped in Jurassic Park 1 with the jeeps, you know, just kind of knocking into it, pushing it a little before everything went bad. Um, and then Rexy stops and looks back at the tree line and roars as the Indominus Rex makes her way onto the beach. It's rematch time, and the two big carnivores go at it. Just like in the movies, the Indominus gets the upper hand. Only this time, Blue isn't there to help Rexy. And she nearly kills, kills her. Noticing that the Indominus is bleeding pretty bad from the neck from a bite from Rexy, the feral predator will come out of his ship cloaked, run and jump onto the Indominus' neck, and just start stabbing it with the double blade. Not even seeing what's attacking her, the Indominus will just grab the invisible foe and throw him. He gets thrown a solid 40 to 50 feet away, and the cloaking goes away upon landing, as it's been damaged now. He also flips right back up and lands in a kneeling position, but his shoulder is dislocated. Bleeding even more now, the Indominus is enraged and she charges at him. He quickly and calmly loads his last metal arrow and takes aim. She gets closer. He waits. She gets even closer. He waits. Right as she is about to clamp her massive jaws on him, he fires. The arrow goes through uh, her, the spinal cord, the spinal part of her throat, and she just collapses on top of him, paralyzed. She's not dead yet, just paralyzed. And he passes out from the pain of six tons falling on top of his leg. Um, or falling on top of him, actually, not his leg. Um, when he wakes... It's dark, which means a few hours have passed. The Indominus Rex has died, and he has at least one broken rib. He needs to get back to his ship to tend to his injuries, and he's also thinking about uh, leaving this place so he doesn't die. <laughs> he's able to slide his way out from underneath the massive carnivore, relocate his shoulder, and start making his way back. He then realized that Rexy is gone, with huge tracks leading back into the forest. Um, and then he stops and looks around. He realizes he's being watched. He then looks up at something staring daggers at him from the top of his ship, as we now enter the final chapter of this story. The Endoraptor. The Endoraptor will jump down in front of him, waiting for his next move. Realizing this is the creature that's been stalking him for days, a true hunter and worthy foe, he'll disarm himself of everything except his double wrist blade and even take his mask off. He'll roar, the endo will do the same, and they'll charge at each other. The fight is brutal and bloody. At one point, the endo pins the predator on the ground uh, with his foot, uh, wanting to finish him by biting his, off his head, but the predator stabs his leg with his blade. The endo roars in pain. The predator then tackles the endoraptor into the side of the ship and just starts banging his head up against the ship repeatedly. Then the endo will use his larger size and frame to just push him off and then slash across his chest. It's a deep gash wound. He tries to stab the endo again, but the dino dodges and bites down on the blades as hard as he could, shattering the blades. His mouth and gums are bleeding, but the predator has lost his only weapon. Or has he? Uh, slightly stunned by the sheer tenacity and intelligence of his foe, uh, the Endo will capitalize on this and bull rush him, knocking him over and stabbing him in the stomach with his big Velociraptor-like claw. 
The predator roars out in pain again, but refuses to lose, grabbing a piece of his broken blade and stabbing it into the Ando's shoulder. The Endoraptor roars out in pain again and backs off, trying to get the blade out with his hands. The predator rolls over, does something on his gauntlet, picks up a small bowling ball sized rock, and gets up. He charges at the endo and hits him over the head with this rock. He'll go to do it again, but this time the endo bites his swinging arm, crushes the bone, lifts him high off the ground, uh, like in the movie, and then bites his arm off. The predator falls to the ground, crying out in pain as he's never been in this much pain before, and the Endoraptor will toss the arm to the side. He'll then get on top of the feral predator, smirks a little bit, knowing that he's won, and goes to bite his skull, but then stops, starts looking around. He hears something through the storm. Uh, yeah, by the way, it's storming. Uh, a beeping sound. It's coming from the arm that he bit off and tossed. Boom. Everything within the general vicinity gets obliterated by the Predator's self-destructing bomb, including the Predator himself. The End like and subscribe if you did enjoy. Leave a comment of what you think and hit the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos and other great stuff. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.